guys welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is victoria and today we are starting a vlog um this is going to be a weekend reading vlog and in it i'm going to be trying to read some books that i want to get to before the end of the year i have like four or five that are on my list that are ones that i like absolutely want to get to before the end of the year so i'm gonna try and read a couple of them this weekend for this vlog so it is currently Friday the 8th, December 8th, when I am filming this. So we are going to just read until probably Monday um, and see how much I can get to by Monday morning. That's probably when I'll uh, finish this vlog. Um, but yeah, that's my plan. Uh, it is about 1230 on Friday and I haven't done a ton today. I uh, had to return something to Amazon, so I had to bring it to the UPS store. So while I was here, I picked up um, some salad dressing because I want to have a salad for lunch when I get home. And I remembered that we were out. But yeah, that's all that I've done today. My life is pretty boring. Um, <laughs> so all I've done is, this morning is uh, have breakfast and work on my computer a bit. So not a very exciting uh friday but my younger brother is actually coming home for the weekend he uh lives in philadelphia with his girlfriend he goes to grad school there so he's coming home for the weekend so it'll be cool to see him and i haven't seen him in a long time actually because he didn't come home for thanksgiving but yeah, that's all I've got going on. Um, I don't think I have anything this weekend. Um, although actually tomorrow I'm going to the movies with my mom because Waitress, the musical, the Broadway show is in theaters this weekend. And uh, we are big Broadway people, she and I. So I bought tickets for the two of us to go to see Waitress um, in theaters. We actually saw Waitress on Broadway a couple of years ago when Catherine McPhee was starring in it. So it'll be really cool to see it again um, in theaters and to just have a girls day with my mom because we'll probably go out to like dinner or lunch, I guess, um, when we're doing that. But yeah, that's all <laughs> that I have planned for this weekend. So on top of that, we're going to be reading. So I actually have started some books. I have am reading currently The Losers Duet by Harley LaRue. I actually finished book one or part one last night and started part two immediately after. Um, I've had these on my TBR for so long and actually so many of you guys have put it in all of my comments. I've gotten so many comments on videos saying, oh my gosh, read The Losers Duet. You got, you would love it. And so I'm finally reading it. It was one that was definitely, it's been on my TBRs, monthly TBRs, like four times this year. So it's one that I definitely wanted to get to before the end of the year. And I've already finished part one and I really enjoyed it. I am probably going to give part one four stars. While I really liked it, it didn't have enough relationship development for me. It had a lot of smut in it and it was too much in comparison to the actual development of the relationship or like plot that they had. Um, there wasn't a ton of plot. It was very much sex and not a ton else. So that one is four stars, but part two I am almost actually done with and I love it so much more than part one. It has that relationship development and plot that I was actually hoping for. The characters are getting to know each other and building a relationship outside of just being attracted to each other and having sex and their like whole deal that they had going on. So I'm really enjoying that and if you don't know what the Losers Duet is about, it is about a heroine named Jessica who was basically a bitch in high school and she bullied these four guys and now it's years later it's like five years later um but she's out of college she's back home and they end up uh forming a polyamorous relationship with the five of them so it's interesting i really like it but i definitely like part two better than part one um i'm like i said i'm almost done with part two so i will definitely be finishing that within the next like two hours so I will let you know how I feel about that when I finish. And then I think after that, um, after I finish that, we are going to switch gears, entirely jump genres. And I think I'm going to read again The Magic by Lisa Kleypas. So 
that is one that I definitely I've said multiple multiple times that I want to read before the end of the year so we're gonna do that one in this vlog and I don't know what we're gonna read after that I have like I said a couple written down on my mind that I want to get to so I'll just see where the mood takes me but I think for right now the mood is gonna take me to again the magic so again I'll let you know when I finish losers and and when I start uh again the magic so yeah that's gonna be it so i'll see you then <laughs> hi guys so i realized i forgot to update you uh today but it is past midnight so it's actually sunday now but i'm laying in bed. I'm about to just read before I go to sleep. I got my baby girl here. Oh, she's so sleepy. She's like, mommy, why aren't we going to bed? Um, but I wanted to give you just a little update on how today went. So last time I spoke to you, I said that I was going to start Again, The Magic by Lisa Kleypas. I started it. I am on chapter two. And I'm on my period this week, and I just got, I was feeling very hormonal yesterday. And when I was trying to start the book and read it, I was getting very frustrated by just the way they treated women back then. And I was just having a lot of, like, feminine rage. And it was not a proper time for me to be reading a historical, and so I stopped that one, but I still wanted to read something for the, that was on my list for the end of the year. So I started Dark Notes by Pam Godwin, and I'm really enjoying that one. I am more than halfway through, I think now, and I am very, very much enjoying it. It's a student teacher dark romance. The heroine is only 17, and she's had a really horrible hard life. Um, there is it's very dark. So it's got a lot of like assault and talk of drug use and rape. And it's just really, it's really rough at times, but I'm very much enjoying it. It's very good. And it has Pam writings, Pam Godwin's just like amazing writing ability in it. And I'm really love, I really love Pam Godwin's writing style. So to be back with her writing style is really great. Um, but that's what I started. And about, like I said, I'm over 50% of the way through it. So I'm very much enjoying that one. And I'll definitely finish that one probably tomorrow. Um, I don't sleep very well. I have insomnia. So if I don't fall asleep, I'll probably listen to more tonight. Um, and then I have been, I showed you some clips or a little clip earlier of me, uh, of my Christmas tree, my brother and I, uh, since my brother's home this weekend, my brother and I put the lights on our Christmas tree, um, or we attempted. We've never done it by ourselves before. Our parents have always done it. Um, so the two of us did that earlier. So I showed you a little clip of my Christmas tree, and I was reading downstairs while my brother was playing a video game, and I was reading my Kindle, and I am reading Mr. Sin by S.J. Tilly, which is not on my books to read before the end of the year list, but it is a book that I've been reading on my Kindle. Um, and I'm really enjoying that one as well. I don't love that one as much as other SJ Tilly's, but I'm pretty sure it's her first book. So I can see how her writing and also editing has improved. And just the way that her plots have gone has improved. So that one is about a billionaire hero who grew up like in a mafia family, his father was part of the mafia, but he has been like trying to legitimize working with this um, company um, as he's launching his new company and he wants to do it in like a very legal way. And so he hires this public relations firm to help him with this. And uh, the heroine is the consultant for the public relations firm. And she and him also had a one night stand without knowing who each other was in Vegas. And so they are having a romance together. Um, 
it's not my favorite SJ Tilly so far, but it is good and it's what I'm reading on my Kindle. So uh, I will probably continue that reading that this weekend when I have time, um, when I need to read something on my Kindle. But other than that, I think that's all for today. Um, I did go see Waitress with my mom and that was super fun. Um, I, like I said earlier, um, in our, when I started this vlog, we saw Waitress on Broadway a couple of years ago, but we saw it with Catherine McPhee. So it was really amazing to see it with Sarah Bareilles. She wrote the music and lyrics for it. So she just did an amazing job. Oh, I'm so sorry. I startled her. Um, she just did an amazing job playing the character. And I, I was, it's such an emotional show. And it's one of my mom's absolute favorite shows. Um, she used to be mine is probably my mom's favorite Broadway song ever. So it was really great for the two of us to go and see it in the theaters in the movies. But yeah, that's it for tonight. So I'll update you again tomorrow with what I've read and how I'm going. But that's going to be it. So good night. Hello friends, we are right back to where I started this vlog and I did a horrible time vlogging. It is actually Tuesday now um, <laughs> and I just completely forgot to talk to you about things. So the I think we're going to just turn this into like a weekly vlog where I skipped Sunday and Monday. Um, so over the weekend on Sunday and Monday, I've read, done a lot of reading since I last talked to you. I don't know if I told you that I had started Dark Notes by Pam Godwin. I'm pretty sure I told you that um, because I was getting frustrated with the historicalness of, again, the magic, which is a totally a me problem. It's just I'm not in the right mood for a historical and we're just gonna go with it. I'm in a serious dark romance mood. So I ended up finishing Dark Notes by Pam Godwin and I really liked it. I think I'm gonna give it 4.5 stars. There are some things in there that seriously push my boundaries, but I ended up really enjoying it. Pam Godwin is just a beautiful writer and I think that her writing is what really makes me calm enough to read a book like Dark Notes or like Sea of Ruin or any other Pam Godwin books that I've read. She definitely includes some darker elements that I'm not sure if I'm okay with, but while reading them, I'm like, okay, I can work with this. There was a scene that I full skipped. I will say that though, and it had nothing to do with the sex or the darkness of it. It was the animal cruelty. Um, there is a scene where the guy there's a guy who is terrible and he has been like raping her her like whole life and he is trying to get her again and he kills her cat and i full skipped it i clicked ahead on the audiobook to the end of the chapter because i did not want to listen to it um and just got to the end of that part and then got ended up reading the aftermath instead but that was the only thing that I was just like I can't do that um I, I was not okay with that and overall I ended up giving it 4.5 stars I'm pretty sure I told you what this was about it's a student teacher romance um the heroine has had a shitty shitty life but is going to this really prestigious private school for music and she has a romance with her teacher um, at the school. He is her piano teacher. And I did really like it, but just please check, tr check trigger warnings before you go into it because it is, it's intense. Uh, and in that intense dark romance mood that I was in, I decided to continue with a dark romance. We are fully just like out of trying to read the books that were on my list for the end of the year and we're just reading what my mood wherever my mood takes me and my mood took me to God of Malice by Rena Kent. Talk about a book that pushes my boundaries. Holy crap. This book. Oh my god. I ended up finishing it on Monday after I read Dark Notes and or maybe I finished it Sunday night. Either way. I Wow, that book is, I can totally see why somebody would not like this book. But because of the mood that I was in, because of the perfect setting that I was feeling while I was reading this book, it really worked for me. I am giving it 4.5 stars also. It is a 
dark romance about a hero who is a true psychopath. He does not have feelings. He is a true psychopath. And he hooks on to this girl who is named Glendon. And she is trying to find out the truth behind a friend of hers that has committed suicide. Um, and she doesn't think that she thinks that there was something else hinky leading up to his suicide. And so she wants to look into it. Um, and they both go to there are the they there's this these two colleges on these this island in England. One of the colleges is for American kids who are the like children of mafia people and then or like dark rich people and then there's another school which is more of a artsy type school and it is a one also for rich kids but rich kids from England and the heroine Glendon goes to the rich kids from England school and the hero Killian is part of this it's kind of like a secret society but not secret on campus for the American kids and he is the head one of the heads of that secret society and she is trying to investigate into it because her friend who committed suicide had been initiating for that and they connect with each other and there is some serious like dubious consent situations in it there are some serious dark romance elements to it but it really worked for me it was so addicting and interesting and I was fully captivated by it so much so that I ended up going in and reading the second book which is called God of Pain I did not like that one as much I did finish that one and I didn't like that one as much as book one the heroine in that one just bugged me a little bit more her name is Annika and the hero in that one's name is Creighton and Annika is a very social butterfly. It's grumpy sunshine. So the heroine is very, uh, sunshiny. She's very social butterfly. The hero Creighton is very quiet, very, he has a traumatic past. Um, and he is trying to look into his traumatic past because he was adopted and he's trying to look into his birth parents and, um, what he remembers about the trauma that he suffered with his birth parents. And so he is trying to look into it. Uh, the heroine Annika is the daughter of the head of the Russian mafia, and they are very much not supposed to be together because Creighton's family is part of the elites, which is from the British school. And uh, Annika's older brother is one of the heads with Killian from book one of the King's one from the American school. Um, and so they're not supposed to be together. It's very forbidden. Um, her brother, Jeremy is just like not about it at all, but it's really interesting. And I didn't love that one as much as book one. I think it's somewhere between 3.5 and four stars. It might, I think I'm going to rate it four stars on Goodreads, but just know it's a low four stars. Um, I just didn't like that one as much as book one and now I'm currently reading the third book in the series which I think is called God of Wrath I think and that one is about Jeremy who's the brother of the heroine Annika from book two and the this one features consensual non-consent also super dark um the heroine and the hero both have a primal kink um, and serious like rape kink um so serious consensual non-consent um dark, dangerous. I'm really enjoying the books though. I'm having a really addicted time. But again, I could totally see why this would not be okay for some people. And it's just working for me. So I am probably going to continue reading the series. The reason why I started this series is, well, I was had seen it. I had been intrigued, um, but knew that I would have to be in the right mood for it. But the fourth one or fifth one just came out and it's an MM romance and a lot of people have been talking about how good it is and so I actually started the series because I want to get to the MM one um and I eventually I'm assuming this week I'm going to get to the MM one so I'll see how long this vlog gets um and just cut it off when I'm feeling it's too long but yeah it's probably going to be weekly instead of weekend so I'll probably end it on Friday instead so yeah it's been a weird weekend like 
Sunday, I was literally barely got out of bed. I didn't get out of my pajamas. I barely got out of bed at all. I was exhausted. I have been dealing with some serious hormonal fatigue. My PCOS has just like seriously flared and I'm struggling a little bit with it. Um, my blood sugar has been seriously out of control um, and I've just been so exhausted. Plus on top of that, having my period, I was just not in a good mood. So it was not the mo mo not the mood for vlogging on Sunday. So that's it for this clip. Um, but again, yeah, I will talk to you when I have something else to say or when I go somewhere else. But I'm currently out Christmas shopping. I'm buying gifts for my uh, roommate from college and my best friend and also my cousin whose birthday. That's But that's for a birthday present, not a Christmas present. Her birthday is on Saturday, Sunday. Saturday. Her birthday's on Saturday. Um, so I'm out Christmas shopping um, or present shopping. But yeah, I will update you later with my thoughts <laughs> hello uh it is wednesday i'm eating peppermint bark Waxy. Go away. um and i want to update you i finished god of well whatever i was reading the third book in the legacy of god series by reading kent um I gave it four stars. It's now my second favorite in the series, so I liked book one the best still. Um, but I liked book three better than book two. Um, this one was Jeremy and Cecily's book and was definitely dark um, and more like sexually dark than some of the other ones. The other ones are definitely like give you like dark energy in the sexual situations, but this one they had a primal kink. So serious, consensual, non-consent. Um, but I liked it. Give it four stars. Um, and I bought the audiobook of book four. So I just started that. I'm only on chapter one, though. And that one is L Landon's book. And Landon is also a psychopath, just like Killian was in book one. Roxy. But Landon is not as likable as Killian was, so I'm really not sure how I'm going to feel about this one. Um, the heroine, I believe, is Mia, who is Nikolai's younger sister. So I think that that's going to be an issue, and there's going to be a lot of, like, Nikolai and Landon uh, not liking each other. Um, because Nikolai is one of the people from the King's University, and Landon is the head of the elites from the... British University. Um, and I don't like Landon. I haven't liked him in the previous books. Um, he was definitely more involved in book three than in book one and two, although he is the brother of the heroine from book one. I don't like him. I don't like him. He's not as likable as the other heroes. And even though the other heroes are also like anti heroes, they're definitely more like villainy heroes. Landon is the most villainy of all the heroes, I think. And I don't like his character very much and so I think it's going to take a lot for this book to make me like him um but I think that Mia the heroine is going to be pretty badass so we'll see how it goes um I'll keep you updated but after I finish this one I am going to have to read Crescent City uh House of Birth and Blood do my reread because I am hosting co-hosting the read-along for the Crescent City series um, in anticipation of book three. Um, and so our live show is on Saturday or Sunday. I can't remember. Um, but it's this weekend. I think it's on Saturday. And so I have to reread that in time for that. Um, so this will be my like sixth or seventh time rereading House of Earth and Blood. It is one of my favorite books of all time. It is a Roxy. She's trying to eat the plants. Um, so it'll be really fun to reread it and talk about it with some friends on Saturday slash Sunday. So again, I will keep you updated how I'm feeling, what I'm reading, where I'm at. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> Later, well, please. Hey, pee -pee.
guys. It is Thursday and I am, it's actually 2.30 in the afternoon, but I'm just now putting on my makeup. I just had lunch and I have to film a video. I really wasn't going to do anything today. I was just going to chill in my bed. I woke up really late. I don't sleep well. I have insomnia and really, really struggle with going to sleep at night. And so I finally fell asleep and I ended up sleeping in and woke up very late. Um, I haven't been feeling well. My body has been just like really hurting. My chronic pain's pretty bad. Um, and so I chilled in my bed for a long time and then I finally got up. Um, so I'm starting the day very late, but I decided to actually get out of bed because I want to film a video today, but in order to do that, I need to do makeup. So I wanted to update you because I actually did finish God of Ruin. I think that's the one I just read, which is book four in the Legacy of God series. So I finally did it. I made it to book five, which is Nico and Brandon's book, which is the MM one, which is the one that just came out recently, which is the whole reason why I started this series in the first place. So I finished book four, which was Landon's book. Landon is Brandon's twin. And I really liked this one. I think this one might be my second favorite in the series. I don't know. It might be tied with book three for my second favorite in the series. But I did really, really like this one. I had talked about how I was not a fan of Landon. He totally came back for me. I really really liked him he definitely has the like asshole qualities of like a psychopath um but he ended up being like really lovable I guess in like a asshole-ish kind of way like he's definitely an anti-hero he's not a like true hero at all um, and he like does what he wants and he has his own moral compass and everything. But it's so cute what he does in order to be good enough for Mia, which is the heroine, especially since she's his enemy's sister. And it was just amazing how he developed his relationship with both his siblings and with the heroine because he eventually like needs his siblings help in order for him to get Mia and he's had a strained relationship with his siblings for like the whole series. The first book is his sister's book. And in that one, his relationship with his sister gets really, it's really bad. And it was really nice to see um, how his relationship with his siblings developed. And I think that's going to be really great going into Brandon's book um, and how his relationship with Brandon is going to affect Brandon in book five, which is God of Fury, I think. So I really liked Landon. I ended up really liking him. I liked how his character developed and it just really worked for me. Mia is such a badass and she's been through so much trauma, but she's still so amazing. I am not a fan of Maya, who is Mia's twin. And I uh, think that the way that the book ended with their relationship was very interesting. Um, and it, it, saddens me a little bit that we're not going to get a book for Maya so like there we won't end up like learning anything else about her um and seeing how uh she changes because I would have liked to see a real uh book for her and Ilya because I did really like Ilya anyway I, I liked Maya a lot and I think that she was a really good heroine and I liked her relationship with Landon um I thought that they were really good together and she was so like able to keep Landon on his toes and I think that Landon really needed a heroine like that in order to make him actually likable and actually like want to fit into society but I will say that it annoyed me a little bit during the book how the characters differentiated between Landon and Killian and I don't think that Landon was that different than Killian was in the beginning of book one before he met Glynn and so like a lot of the people like judged Landon for his antisocial disorder but they were like oh he's Killian's so great and I'm like they are so similar I don't understand why 
people were like against Landon when they were like shouting Killian's praises. But I like that Mia ended up realizing and understanding that. Um, and it just like made it better. I'm just wiping off my eyebrows. It just made it better. And I think that their relationship really benefited from that. But overall, I enjoyed the book. I haven't decided if it's going to be four or 4.5 stars. Um, but it's going to end up being one of those. Uh, and I'm really excited to start God of Fury. I am hoping that I can finish it in time to then read Crescent City, House of Birth and Blood, because the live show for Crescent City is on Sunday. So I'm hoping that I can finish God of Fury between today and tomorrow and then read Crescent City on Friday and Saturday um, in order to be ready for the live show on Sunday. I've read Crescent City multiple times before and I have in the past read it in like a day or a day and a half. So I think that I can do it. And I want to finish uh, the Legacy of God series in this video because I think it'll be fun to see like all of the books and my eventual reaction to every single book. Um, and it'll just be like a dark romance vlog because um, I read Dark Notes in this vlog also. Um, so I failed and I read Losers. I talked about Losers. So it was just like a full uh, dark romance <laughs> weekly vlog instead of um, a end uh, reading books for my from my end of the year list. So <laughs> whoops. But I'm glad that I read this and I really enjoy it. And it's like one of my favorite series that I've read in 2023. So having a great time. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish my makeup, try and film some videos, and then I will update you when I am have some thoughts about God of Fury. Hi guys. So it's Friday and I woke up with the worst migraine ever this morning. I have chronic migraines. I have a neurological condition that affects my brain and my head and gives me headaches. And it was just like perfect storm of everything today. And combine that with the fact that I haven't been sleeping much. I just felt so bad this morning when I woke up and ended up not getting out of bed until 1.30 in the afternoon. And then I've been laying in bed basically the entire day. Um, it's about 4.45 now and my mom just made me some scrambled eggs because that's what she usually makes me when I'm not feeling well. So she's like the best mom ever. Um, so that was really sweet of her and I'm starting to feel a little bit more alive and I'm gonna jump in the shower because that usually helps me feel more alive and awake. So I'm gonna do that, but I wanted to let you know that I finished God of Fury. I finished it and I am giving it 5 million stars. It was so fucking good. It was so fucking good. And I loved it. I loved it so, so much. Definitely my favorite in the series. God of Malice is my second favorite. Um, and then I think, I think Landon and Jeremy's books are tied. And then my least favorite in the series is Creighton's book, which is book two. Um, but God of Fury, definitely my favorite. So, so good. It was so well done. Um, Nico and Brandon are so good together. They're very opposites. And I think that they calm each other so well. Brandon has like a OCD uh, trauma struggles. And Nico has like manic episodes and the two of them just like bring each other to balance and I love that so much it was so so good and even if you don't want to read the rest of the series I would recommend reading God of Fury you could probably read it as a standalone they do a good job of explaining everything else that's going around um and because the books take place simultaneously or like a little bit past the end of the last one so they like all overlap with the previous book I think it does a really good job of letting you know what's happened in previous books without spoiling the previous books so I think you could read this one as a standalone so even if you don't want to read the rest of the series highly highly recommend this last one although I personally loved the whole series I was in the perfect mood to read them they're so addicting so fun and just a good dark romance time. I'm so happy that I read it. So 
so happy that I read it, but it has now been a week since I started this vlog. So I'm going to close the vlog here. I'm going to say goodbye. Um, but yeah, this vlog definitely did not start out how it ended. I started out <laughs> trying to do a weekend vlog where I was reading books from my 15 books through before the end of the year list and I ended up with a whole new series and a bunch of dark romance. So that's gonna be it. So I thank you for watching if you got this far and like this video if you liked it. Subscribe, stick around, see more content from me, and I hope you have the absolute best day.